2 Chronicles, Chapter 23 In the seventh year, Jehoiada showed his strength. He made a covenant with the commanders of units of a hundred. Azariah, son of Jeroham, Ishmael, son of Jehohanan, Azariah, son of Obed, Maasiah, son of Adiah, and Elishaphat, son of Zikri. They went throughout Judah and gathered the Levites and the heads of Israelite families from all the towns. When they came to Jerusalem, the whole assembly made a covenant with the king at the temple of God. Jehoiada said to them, The king's son shall reign, as the Lord promised concerning the descendants of David. Now this is what you are to do. A third of you priests and Levites, who are going on duty on the Sabbath, are to keep watch at the doors. A third of you at the royal palace, a third at the foundation gate, and all the others are to be in the courtyards of the temple of the Lord. No one is to enter the temple of the Lord except the priests and Levites on duty. They may enter because they are consecrated, but all the others are to observe the Lord's command not to enter. The Levites are to station themselves round the king, each with weapon in hand. Anyone who enters the temple is to be put to death. Stay close to the king wherever he goes. The Levites and all the men of Judah did just as Jehoiada the priest ordered. Each one took his men, those who were going on duty on the Sabbath and those who were going off duty, for Jehoiada the priest had not released any of the divisions. Then he gave the commanders of units of a hundred, the spears and the large and small shields, that had belonged to King David, and that were in the temple of God. He stationed all the men, each with his weapon in his hand, round the king, near the altar and the temple, from the south side to the north side of the temple. Jehoiada and his sons brought out the king's son, and put the crown on him. They presented him with a copy of the covenant, and proclaimed him king. They anointed him, and shouted, Long live the king! When Ataliah heard the noise of the people, running and cheering the king, she went to them at the temple of the Lord. She looked, and there was the king, standing by his pillar at the entrance. The officers and the trumpeters were beside the king, and all the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets, and musicians with their instruments were leading the praises. Then Ataliah tore her robes and shouted, Treason! Treason! Jehoiada the priest sent out the commanders of units of a hundred, who were in charge of the troops, and said to them, Bring her out between the ranks, and put to the sword anyone who follows her. For the priest had said, Do not put her to death at the temple of the Lord. So they seized her as she reached the entrance of the horse gate on the palace grounds, and there they put her to death. Jehoiada then made a covenant that he, the people, and the king, would be the Lord's people. All the people went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They smashed the altars and idols and killed Matan the priest of Baal in front of the altars. Then Jehoiada placed the oversight of the temple of the Lord in the hands of the Levitical priests to whom David had made assignments in the temple to present the burnt offerings of the Lord as written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and singing as David had ordered. He also stationed gatekeepers at the gates of the Lord's temple, so that no one who was in any way unclean might enter. He took with him the commanders of hundreds, the nobles, the rulers of the people, and all the people of the land, and brought the king down from the temple of the Lord. They went into the palace through the upper gate, and seated the king on the royal throne. All the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was calm because Ataliah had been slain with the sword. 2 Chronicles chapter 24 Joash was seven years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for forty years. His mother's name was Zibiah. She was from Beersheba. Joash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all the years of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada chose two wives for him, and he had sons and daughters. Some time later, Joash decided to restore the temple of the Lord. He called together the priests and Levites, and said to them, Go to the towns of Judah, 
and collect the money due annually from all Israel to repair the temple of your God. Do it now. But the Levites did not act at once. Therefore the king summoned Jehoiada the chief priest and said to him, Why haven't you required the Levites to bring in from Judah and Jerusalem the tax imposed by Moses, the servant of the Lord, and by the assembly of Israel for the tent of the covenant law? Now the sons of that wicked woman, Ataliah, had broken into the temple of God and had used even its sacred objects for the Baals. At the king's command, a chest was made and placed outside, at the gate of the temple of the Lord. A proclamation was then issued in Judah and Jerusalem that they should bring to the Lord the tax that Moses, the servant of God, had required of Israel in the wilderness. All the officials and all the people brought their contributions gladly, dropping them into the chest until it was full. Whenever the chest was brought in by the Levites to the king's officials, and they saw that there was a large amount of money, the royal secretary and the officer of the chief priest would come and empty the chest and carry it back to its place. They did this regularly and collected a great amount of money. The king and Jehoiada gave it to those who carried out the work required for the temple of the Lord. They hired masons and carpenters to restore the Lord's temple, and also workers in iron and bronze to repair the temple. The men in charge of the work were diligent, and the repairs progressed under them. They rebuilt the temple of God according to its original design and reinforced it. When they had finished, they brought the rest of the money to the king and Jehoiada, and with it were made articles for the Lord's temple, articles for the service and for the burnt offerings, and also dishes and other objects of gold and silver. As long as Jehoiada lived, burnt offerings were presented continually in the temple of the Lord. Now Jehoiada was old and full of years, and he died at the age of a hundred and thirty. He was buried with the kings in the city of David because of the good he had done in Israel for God and his temple. After the death of Jehoiada, the officials of Judah came and paid homage to the king, and he listened to them. They abandoned the temple of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and worshipped Asherah poles and idols. Because of their guilt, God's anger came on Judah and Jerusalem. Although the Lord sent prophets to the people to bring them back to him, and though they testified against them, they would not listen. Then the Spirit of God came on Zechariah, son of Jehoiada the priest. He stood before the people and said, This is what God says. Why do you disobey the Lord's commands? You will not prosper. Because you have forsaken the Lord, He has forsaken you. But they plotted against Him, and by order of the king they stoned Him to death in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. King Joash did not remember the kindness Zechariah's father, Jehoiada, had shown him, but killed his son, who said as he lay dying, May the Lord see this and call you to account. At the turn of the year, the army of Aram marched against Joash. It invaded Judah and Jerusalem and killed all the leaders of the people. They sent all the plunder to their king in Damascus. Although the Aramean army had come with only a few men, the Lord delivered into their hands a much larger army. Because Judah had forsaken the Lord, the God of their ancestors, judgment was executed on Joash. When the Arameans withdrew, they left Joash severely wounded. His officials conspired against him for murdering the son of Jehoiada the priest, and they killed him in his bed. So he died and was buried in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. Those who conspired against him were Zabad, son of Shimea, an Ammonite woman, and Jehozabad, son of Shimrith, a Moabite woman. The account of his sons, the many prophecies about him, and the record of the restoration of the temple of God are written in the annotations on the book of the kings, and Amaziah his son succeeded him as king. Psalm 4 Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. 
Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Proverbs chapter 30 The sayings of Agur, son of Jacob, an inspired utterance. This man's utterance to Ithiel. I am weary, God, but I can prevail. Surely I am only a brute, not a man. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained to the knowledge of the Holy One. Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is the name of his son? Surely you know. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Do not slander a servant to their master, or they will curse you and you will pay for it. There are those who curse their fathers and do not bless their mothers those who are pure in their own eyes and yet are not cleansed of their filth, those whose eyes are ever so haughty, whose glances are so disdainful, those whose teeth are swords and whose jaws are set with knives to devour the poor from the earth and the needy from among the human race. The leech has two daughters. Give, give, they cry. There are three things that are never satisfied, Four that never say enough. The grave, the barren womb, land, which is never satisfied with water, and fire, which never says enough. The eye that mocks a father, that scorns an aged mother, will be pecked out by the ravens of the valley, will be eaten by the vultures. There are three things that are too amazing for me, four that I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a snake on a rock, the way of a ship on the high seas, and the way of a man with a young woman. This is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I've done nothing wrong. Under three things the earth trembles, under four it cannot bear up. A servant who becomes king a godless fool who gets plenty to eat, a contemptible woman who gets married, and a servant who displaces her mistress. Four things on earth are small, yet they are extremely wise. Ants are creatures of little strength, yet they store up their food in the summer. Hyraxes are creatures of little power, yet they make their home in the crags. Locusts have no king, yet they advance together in ranks. A lizard can be caught with the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. There are three things that are stately in their stride, four that move with stately bearing. A lion, 
mighty among beasts who retreats before nothing, a strutting cock, a he-goat, and a king secure against revolt. If you play the fool and exalt yourself, or if you plan evil, clap your hand over your mouth. For as churning cream produces butter, and as twisting the nose produces blood, so stirring up anger produces strife.